<laughs> okay, what are we doing today? All right, we've got a great recipe for you today. So we've uh, we've got like an Austrian dish, like stroganoff. We've got an Italian dish, meatballs, and we're going to combine them all together, and we're doing it with venison as well. Nice. So something a little bit different, nice and healthy, uh, and then serving it with some nice buttered noodles. Absolutely brilliant. That will be great. Looking forward to that. We'll show you a little later on how to do that. Great to have you with us. We are here in the Beko Kitchen for another creative recipe. And Mark, we are making venison meatball stroganoff. This sounds delicious. We are, we are, and we're using venison. So yeah. it's a really good meat, nice flavour in there, a little bit gamey, uh, really lean, really healthy, and yes. a great time to eat venison now, you know, as we come into the colder months. And perfect recipe, actually. Okay, nice. So, right, let's get going. Right, so I've just sweated off these onions here. So this is just, just in a little bit of oil over a low heat for about sort of eight to ten minutes. And you can see they're starting to get translucent, they're softening up a little bit, and they're bringing that sweetness out. And we're going to put that in our meatball uh, mix or in, on our venison. So we've got our venison here. Just going to break it down a little bit, and then we're going to start adding some flavours for our meatballs. Mm, yeah. All right, so onions go in. The good thing is about New Zealand venison as well is that, you know, because of the grass diet and the way that the venison is fed in New Zealand, it's got a really nice taste. It's not sort of overpowering like some of it is from overseas. Yeah, sometimes it can be really gamey, and yeah, I think that's what puts yeah. a lot of people off. But, yeah, as you said, it's just, um, you know, you've got this nice extra flavour in there, but not, not overpowering and not... You know, if you if you don't like venison or you've never tried it, you should just try it once, you know? I reckon. And this is a great way of doing it in uh, in meatballs, using the mince. Yes, I do love I do love my venison, actually. I do have it every now and again. Do you know where uh, the word venison came from? Oh, no. No, oh, I can tell oh. you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it is Latin for vena... Well, it's, it's, it's Latin, so yeah. it derives from the word venati, which means to hunt. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's where the word venison comes from. <laughs> I was up on Google last night. <laughs> Thanks, really? Google. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got a little bit of uh, whole grain mustard in there. I've got a little bit of breadcrumbs, and that's just going to help bind it together and just soften it as well. Okay, so whole grain mustard, breadcrumbs. Yeah, and then yeah. we're going to pop an egg in it as well. Nice. That's going to bind it all together. Um, because venison is, uh, it's, you know, it's a very lean meat, you know. It's very healthy. So when you're cooking it, you know, if we're using the mince here, we just we need to add a few products in there to keep it nice and moist. Okay. Cool. And then if you've got the loin or you're going to cook it on the barbecue, um, you know, don't overcook it because it will get really uh, dry and tough. Okay. You know, great. so you just got so that's probably the most important thing with venison. Okay, because of, of the lack of fat in it. Yeah, lack of yeah. fat in okay, it. Cool. So you know, you want to be eating it. Um, you know, even rare, but definitely medium rare, you know. And then even medium, you know, it's starting to sort of, you know, get a little bit sort of dry. And okay. anything over that, it's just like yeah, like wet cardboard. Good good tips. Thanks. No one likes eating wet cardboard. Well, <laughs> Lesser at church. <laughs> All right, so we're going to shape our meatballs. So here's a good tip for you now. Pop this in the fridge for about 20 minutes and it'll just firm up. Yeah. Right, and then you can get a really good shape on it. But we're just going to, uh, we're going to show you now. Uh, and then I've got another pan here, and we're just going to shape them, and we're going to pop them in, and we're just going to uh, nicely brown them. Okay, cool. Okay, nicely so what? Brown, brown them. Brown, <laughs> brown, <laughs> brown them. <laughs> okay, brown them. So that's them. about the right size you want too. Yeah, right? yeah. So you're, I mean, you, you, yep. you know, you can do what you want. You know, if you if you like big ones, you can make big rissoles if you want. Um, but you know, meatballs. You know, that that's my interpretation nice. of size of uh, of meatballs there. And another top tip as well, you yes. know, because once you cook them, you can't get any more seasoning in there. Okay. So put your ingredients in there, give it a good um, season with salt and pepper, and then just fry a small amount of um, mix off, mm. you know, and when it's cooked, take it out, taste it, and if it needs more seasoning, you can add it. Another great tip. Full of great tips today. You are. You been up on, and you been up on Google or are you just <laughs> yeah. a chef? Oh, you're a chef, that's right. <laughs> How the school holidays going anyway? Because you know, you've, you've got a couple of daughters. Yep, yep, yep. No, really good. They're uh, yeah, causing at chaos home. at home. Watching. <laughs> Hi, girls. Hi. Dad's working. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. Well, I'll tell you what, um, you can, I've done nothing. I've just yeah, stood I know, here and told you tips, uh, told you facts <laughs> about venison. Um, we'll come back very soon here to sort this out. We are back in the Beko kitchen, the second part of Mark's venison meatball and wild mushroom stroganoff. And just look, would you check out Mark's balls? <laughs> These look delicious. <laughs> That's good. Right, nice. so, we, so we've got a nice colour on there. Mm. We've sealed them off. Take them out. You know, don't worry if they're a little bit under because they're going to uh, be introduced re re back okay, into cool. the sauce after, yep. so they will carry on a little bit cooking. Mm -hmm. So same pan, 
If you need to, you can add a touch more oil, but yep. you probably won't need to. Get it hot again, and then slice some mushrooms in there. So we've got some Swiss brown mushrooms. Nice. You can use butter mushrooms, shiitakes, anything you want. But you've got to have a nice hot pan. And do you use the same pan for the flavour of yep. the venison through the mushrooms? Okay, yep, cool. that's Makes it. Sense. So, you know, yep. use the same pan. It does two things, you know. It gives you extra flavour. You've got yep. all, that, um, all those venison juices and flavours in there. And it's less washing up. No, nice. we love. <laughs> you know. <laughs> all about the Ooh. tips. <laughs> no, we you don't need that one. Your last one. I would have put that back in because yeah. I love mushrooms. Right, so we need that high heat in there. Yep. You know, so we're starting to get a colour on the mushrooms. Quick so that's going to bring some flavour. I'll keep an eye on these. What are you doing now? Brilliant. Right, I've got a little bit of time, so I'm just going to roughly chop that. So if you've got the if you've got the time when it's really soft like the stalks, yes. like that, you know, and they're sort of quite flimsy, that's great. You can just chop the whole thing up. If it's a bit more sort of wintry time or hardy time, you know, that time of year, you'll have to pull the leaves off, you know, because right. you don't want to uh, you don't want to chop those stalks because they're uh, a little bit um, tough. Yeah, I've never seen thyme that soft before, actually. So thanks for that. Yeah, there's plenty of different times. <laughs> Lots of good times too, Mark, <laughs> with you in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> right, so once we is get, it, once we get a bit of columns, is yeah, there, no, that. there's lots of different times, you know, you get winter time, summer time, lemon time, <laughs> and cooking time, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and party time, that's um, it, okay, so you put some knobs of butter in there, right, so let's put a little bit of butter in now, so it's going to get some flavour, mm. it's going to start caramelising, garlic's gone in there as well, Jeez, it smells so good, and this is what we want to do, all these flavours we're building around the sauce, so, uh, mustard in the sauce now, yep. a little bit of whole grain, and I've got a little bit of Dijon, Dijon. as well there. They'll give you the spoon, you can do something now. They give it that <laughs> nice stir around. Oh, yum. The smell coming from these mushrooms is Get a little pinch paprika. of uh, paprika in there. Yep. Just a little bit of heat, you know, not too much. You don't want to make it spicy, but just give you that sort of extra sort of depth. And I've got a little bit of flour, which is going to help us thicken it. So just a, just a touch goes in there. Oh, put mate. the flour in this stage and just really sort of, you know, stir everything around. And then some liquids. Okay. A little bit of brandy. So when you're doing brandy, just be a little bit careful. Like because it'll flame up. Yeah, because we've got an open flame. Woo. Yeah. Woo! It's exciting in the kitchen, isn't it? All right. <laughs> you turn the fire alarms off. It's so pop so your, good. Pop your brandy in. Yes. And then what that's going to do, you flame it and you take all the alcohol off. So you just left with that beautiful flavour. So obviously be careful when you do that. I, uh, well, I did it in the, well, someone did it in the kitchen once and they flamed it with quite a, lot, a large amount of alcohol. Oh no, <laughs> and with looked, your beard. <laughs> yeah, well no, 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 his eyebrows, he didn't oh, have any eyebrows. eyebrows. <laughs> didn't have any eyebrows left. It was very oh. funny, probably not the time for him. Right, so bring it all to the boil. So we're going to start reducing this down slowly, but we've got the flour which is going to help thicken. Mm -hmm. Just to richen it up, just got a bit of tomato sauce in there. Just helps with that richness. Again, only a little bit. You don't want it tasting of tomato, okay? You're just richening this sauce oh. up. And we're going to probably reduce <laughs> that down by about half. Yes. And then we're going to add some sour cream in as well. So that's okay, going to help cool. cut it, give us a nice creaminess. And then once the sour cream's in, you probably, you know, you can put your meatballs back in there for about five minutes. They warm back up, they finish cooking, and your sauce is nice and there. Nice and thick and mushroomy and full of flavour. And then all we're going to do yes. is a little bit of water, salted water in here. We've got some um, tagliatelle. Just yep. cook it, drain it off, knob of butter in there, a little bit of salt, toss it around, and that is a beautiful, well, not summery dish, because it's not summer anymore. No. <laughs> Wintry dish. Yeah. And I, can I just say, I can't wait to taste this. It was nice and fast. It's going to be rich and delicious. Well done. Thank you, Mark. Good work. <laughs> okay, now it's over to the Becker kitchen. And how's the stroganoff turned out? Oh, it's beautiful. Just plating it up now. Trying to keep it nice and neat. Oh. Lots of beautiful sauce over the top. There you go. Good work. That Try looks this. so delicious. Yeah. Yeah.